Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba. thank you for joining me. Let's play some more of our campaign as, uh, Japan. Japanimation. We're in a lower maintenance. We have, uh, just done something with the merchant guilds. We're going to- we could, ooh, we could build some more heavies and then sell them for funsies. They have 45% loyalty. I like this. This is trending upwards. We could grant, grant some monopoly charters. Gain loyalty and then, like, buy ships, sell the ships, that whole thing. Granting a, a free admiral. How are we doing on leader limit? We're at 3 out of 3 right now. Uh, do we want to do anything? Just ask them straight up for a contribution could be good. I feel like sacking some prestige makes sense when we're about to win a war. So let's let's go ahead and grant them some, a Monopoly Charter. And then let's demand money from them. And then let's also demand... Is there anything else we can do to gain loyalty? Not really. I mean, the diplomatic support would have been nice, but I feel good. I feel good about where things are at. Um, getting your influence up fifth to seventy-five. I think we recruit the level three theologian, and then we make a generous donation, and then we demand administrative support. I think here we want to probably try to get your influence up as well. If we could get your influence up to 75. First off, we're going to grant a generalship even though we don't need it. And then we're going to... Uh, let's see. How long until something expires? 541. That's quite a ways away. I'm not really too concerned. Like, I find it pretty easy to manage estates these days. I think we just call a diet. Get their influence to 77. And then we, again, we demand military support. I want to do all three at once. So we're going to demand support here as well. This is going to tank our trade efficiency, which sucks. But I want all these monarch points. And this will trend back upwards again. We could always grant them some new territory. Um, let's see what kind of a general we got. We ended up with two new guys that we just hired. We got a... Pretty crap guy for a uh, an admiral. I think we just fire him. And for the general, a 03 is pretty crap compared to the other guy. We fire him as well. It's okay though. We just got 450 monarch points for fun, so it's good stuff. Meanwhile, we're doing a low maintenance siege because we can. We're trying best we can here to uh, pay off our debts. Pretty close to being able to end this war. Ooh, ouch, that hurts. Certainly care more about the Diplo points. Lost a claim on Korea. Two claims on Korea. Ouch. Bengal has just rivaled Ming. Ming continues to get closer and closer to implosion. Which is exciting. We're about to get quality level 2, which will also give us man national manpower modifier, which will be nice. We did have to renew a loan. Let's go ahead and explore the... This explores Africa. Wow. Go go explore South America. Sure, why not? Just, just explore something, okay? I don't care what it is. Explore all the things. We have disloyal estates, we're aware. Not too concerned about it. Um, as soon as we finish the next colony, we will be doing this this mission. But we don't really... I mean, we have the money, we could probably afford to do another colony. I just don't like to do it. I prefer... I would rather pay off all of our debt before we worry about supporting extra colonies. The Buryat Separatists, I'm not co too concerned about. They're at 80%. They are up here. In, uh, Ud. But... Their major modifier, Autonomy Decreased, expires in December of this year, of next year, excuse me. So, there's a pretty good chance that we can avoid this rebellion altogether just by parking our army here. And we've won our siege. Okay, we might as well take the naval fight. There's a chance we could catch, some sh catch a ship or two. We do actually have an admiral in charge. No, we don't. Never mind, I'm wrong. He's currently exploring. Still, there is a small chance we could catch a ship. And we're certainly not going to lose anything. Oh, all right. Captured no ships. Seems fine. We have no diplomats free. Let's come home from Korea. Let's pull all the troops up to here. And 
and offer our peace deal. So, these things we take for free because it's part of the, the peace deal. Everything else would cost us how many Diplo points if we were to do it? I mean, if we just gave him everything and just said, enjoy the overextension. First off, we should transfer everything to Bruni. Because I'm certainly not going to take any of it for myself. I don't believe Bruni, sorry, Brunei, has any increased coring costs or anything. So, there's really no harm in feeding them land. If we were to, to just take everything, it can be it can be done in one war. It's going to cost quite a few Diplo points. 123? 123 to just make the war faster and like make the consolidation of this land down here. I think that's worthwhile. So yeah, congrats Bruni, Brunei. You now have more lands. You should be happy. Good stuff. We'll go ahead and take our military idea. It'll help out with our manpower recovery speed. Kind of riding the threshold here on uh, influence with the estates. They're all pretty high. Now what's up with this? Is this wasteland that's being colorized because... Maybe that's... Oh, maybe that's what... It, that explains why I, there was like wasteland that I couldn't... Like land I couldn't move into. It's, it must be wasteland and it's just being colorized. That's got to be what it is. Alright, well, we're not sticking down here. We're going to come back up north. Um, the next easiest war that we could do would be just to invade Kam Chadal's. Um, Korea... ...is how strong. Korea is sitting on 19k troops on Tech 9. And we could easily... we could do that war. I could take some land from them. Um, I think we do want to continue to build a spy network against them. The problem was, I think that there was no other vassal that we could release. And the good thing about doing what we did down here with Bruni, paying those Diplo points, is that as soon as we can, we want to integrate this guy. Um, so we just need to get his opinion up. Which we're currently working on. Korea! Fabricating claim is going to cost 30. I'm going to... Cardell. I was just working on Cardell because I wanted Siege Speed, but I don't really care too much. I think I'd rather do something else. Meanwhile, one of our colonies is at 759, so that's nice. I still do have plans to uh, attack and release and get some vassals down here. We just need to integrate a vassal or two to open up some space. We could go over the relationship limit, but I'd prefer not to. Um, let's grab one of the barks out of that fleet and have him go protect trade in Nippon. Take you on an explore mission. Go explore whatever. Am I still pronouncing things wrong? It wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. Meanwhile, the Ming pretenders move around. Korchin's trying to keep control of Korchin. The Mongolian separatists are nowhere to be found. Wait. Those look like nobles. I don't know where they are. Is this that? Oh, never. Nope, those are the Ming one. I don't know what happened to the Mongolian separatists. Still, I'm hoping that Ming implodes and some more land gets returned to Mongolia. That would be very nice. Ming pretenders will not enter our territory, so we don't have to worry about being on the border with low maintenance. We're fine. We are over our naval force limit. Anything else we can do with Bruni to make him like us so that we can in integrate him a little bit quicker? Um, I mean, we do need to give him time to core, but he's doing a good job, and well before we can actually integrate him, I think he'd have those cores done. So, I think we want to annex him, like, right away. I think we send him some money. I think that, that seems like a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Uh, 75 ducats takes him to what we need. Bring back the diplomat, start the integration now. And then we can actually uh, take advantage. I think we attack Malacca or Maja Pulp, but whatever the hell it's called. We release another vassal down that way. That'll be good. I'm assuming that this guy's been our vassal long enough. Oh yeah, he definitely has. So begin the integration. June of 1550, three per month. It'll take a while. So you're saying it's gonna take some time. Yeah. We also have a diplomatic reputation guy available. All right, let's speed up that integration process then. That's more important to me than money is, and trade efficiency. 
Uh, let's see. So, uh, we're on low maintenance. Let's go up to high maintenance for a couple months. Manpower's starting to come back. That's nice. We do have debt. We can pay off debt. We should just wait for the pop-ups, though. I mean, really. What the hell happened, do you think, to the Mongol pretenders? The Mongol separatists? Do you th I mean, surely... That's not them, is it? We should send some ships over there. Here, you're not locked. Give me, give me, ah, shoot, you can't pull a single ship out. Temporarily, like, just send the ships, I just want to scout, I want to see what they're doing. Something, this is the, this is a throne, these are pretenders trying to take the capital. So, they're going to enforce demands on Ming. That, on its own, doesn't trigger all the other ones to succeed, it's 50% occupation. Key just declared independence. That's actually bad for us because that means that they enforce their demands, which is that now less land is occupied. But that does give us a free truce timer, but we don't border it in any way. So unless it becomes a valid rival, we have no way of making anything happen here. Unless he wants to become a vassal. Straight up vassal. Negative 101 reasons. Yeah, I didn't think so. But whatever. I mean, you know, the more fractured our, our neighbor gets, the better. More independent little pieces to eat. We pulled back a diplomat for a reason. Do you, I don't remember why. Um, bum bum bum. You know what? I think I just want to get this war started. More so than paying attention to what's going on with Ming. I think we need to just invade here. We'll land our troops up here. We'll march into Kamchatkal. So I don't want to take the the landing penalty. Ming is doing all kinds of revocations and crap. They have a 42% chance. They are apparently assaulting right now. Jin just broke free. Yeah, they, they assaulted and failed. Our explorer just died. Well, there goes the uh, exploration mission. Can we hire a new one? I'm fairly certain that the last explorer that I got, I didn't pay for. I think we, we got from here. I could be mistaken. Oh well, we explored almost everything. There's, there's very little else that I want to explore. Ming has entered into an alliance with Ava. Ning has broken free. Looks like the Mongol Separatists will probably be soon then as well, if I had to guess. It's based on the fact that they keep on breaking free. They're reaching their timers. Ming- the ming plosion. Ming just can't freaking keep it together, man. He just can't do it. Get this war started now. We'll head up to here. And actually, depending on what we see here, we might just land. Take the penalty, anyway. Uh, I should have made sure that our leader was in charge, the one with siege value, but I didn't. So, in that case, we will go up here. That way, in neutral territory, we can appoint something else. I want the siege leader guy. I actually want both, honestly. But we do need to take advantage of... Um, ...of Korea, while they still have no allies. Oh, they did pick up an alliance. They allied Jin. Okay, that could be cool. We could vassalize Jin. He has no other cores or claims, but still, could be cool. Separate piece, vassalize him. Okay, we'll put the... Uh We'll keep the army in two parts and just march them both down there. Autonomy decreases. Gone away in Ud. There goes our rebel chance in Buryat. B5. Autonomy looks pretty good in most places. We're at war, so we can't actually reduce it. The Ming separatists are doing a good job. Come on, I want to see Mongolia get just much bigger. Ming Mongolia. Give it all back.
It's so glorious to see our, our enemy shrink. We've been kicked out of Korea. It's unfortunate. Fortunately, the, the timer is only three months. So we'll just come right back to it. We'll keep the diplomat free for three months. It's fine. I don't I don't want to forget. That's what he was supposed to be doing. So in April, we'll just send a new guy. Okay, we'll take the non-siege leader to here. Kill his army. Okay, make the long-term investment for Diplo points, or do we want 732 ducats? Now there's two event types, one of them that gives Diplo points, one that gives no Diplo points. And this one gives Diplo points, and I think that this one usually you want the Diplo points. The other one... Or, or maybe, is this the one that you want to just take demand payment in full? Because it can fire all the freaking time. Can't remember which one it is. Is this the one that can fire multiple times in a row? Hmm. I, I think this is the one that can fire, like, all the freaking time. So, I'm gonna go ahead and say demand and payment in full, on the off chance that we can get that... ...that done. We finished our colony as well, at the same time. Let's not forget about our mission, so we need to go to the curls. And we'll get that started. Excellent. Twitch chat is saying that's the one that repeats. Good. Yeah, the 50 Diplo points would be nice, but if we could get that event to fire over and over and over again and just get tons and tons of money, that'd be pretty freaking awesome. Uh, we'll finish that core. We have no other cores. We do have one territory. South Sumatra. South... Sum... South Sumatra. Is it... Is it... It's probably... If I had to guess, it's doing some weird thing like with the colony. This is probably that area. Yes, it is. Yep. Colonies are weird. Land is defecting to Karadel. Okay. Ming continuing to just lose land to rebels. And we've got our three-star general in charge of Kamchatka. Kamchatka! Our glorious armies have exterminated the remaining forces. We're working on getting enough uh, spy network efficiency here so that we can just immediately attack that land as well. But really, I, I should attack Korea. I should. I haven't. At least not yet. But I should. I'd love to take the next military tech level. Oh, you're right, Pretenders. They can take care of that. It's a zero, zero, zero leader. I think they'll be fine on their own. Okay, so we're just waiting on the siege. You has declared war on Min, so they can't... <laughs> of course they can't be friends. And states demand control of provinces, so the nobility wants more land. They're just barely below the threshold. Um, do we have any high autonomy land that we could grant them? Kiringa is the highest. And it does have more manpower than anything else. If we transferred this, it would decrease the loyalty of the... Ah, uh, no, the clergy need... they need 10%. But this is converted to the right religion. And we are going to end up giving them this province. So let's piss off the clergy for a moment. Give this to the nobles instead. It'll put them above the threshold. We'll have a problem of uh, a risk of rebellion, uh, a disaster. And now we're going to see the same pop up now. The clergy demanding control of territory. But they're going to stay above 43% for a couple months while we finish this. Then we give them control of this province because we want to convert it. Should work out just fine. The impending disaster is going to take so slowly that I don't think we have to really worry about the aristocratic coup. Should be no problem whatsoever. And, uh, yeah, four per month on the integration of, of, uh, Brunei. 
July of 49. It's quite a long time. The Son of Heaven requests that the islands to the north of Japan be settled with the landless Ronin for the peace of the Emperor. We have been exposed to more of the map, like we keep getting pop-ups about Poland and the Ottomans. Lithuania is in a union underneath Poland. Somehow we've discovered the capitals of Ferrara and Genoa and Denmark and stuff over here. It is what it is. The province of something has defected to our vassal. Nice. Our vassal grows. For free. I'm happy. That is a free 12 development that we just gained. Very good. We have disloyal vassals. Mongol liberty desire. I believe when you see... When land defects to them, they get very... They want independence. They, they have zero chance of actually rebelling, so... I'm not concerned about it at all. They'll probably get even more land defected to them. But they're gonna stick with us. They'll be fine. Can we please win the siege? I'd love to get the siege done before we wrap this episode up. Alright, there we go. Uh, we'll fight their navy. Off chance we catch a ship. We have room for a, a naval leader. Maybe we just hire another explorer. There's still more exploration to be done. I think so. A 113, not bad. It's too bad we couldn't appoint him during combat. He'd have a 3% chance of capturing ships. Uh, let's find our 3 stack. And get him exploring... Uh, Africa, Oceania, Oceania. Just go explore whatever. Okay, uh, we end our war. Take all your money. Nothing else can be done. Immediately we grant this to the... Uh, oh, it's a territory, right. Gain one base tax in the curls. Of course, of course we do that. Uh, we core this. Supply is only 13 here. I think for now we pull our troops home and let's go invade Korea while we core this. Once this is cored, then we'll be able to do our quick war against this guy. Our next colony is going to be in in uh, Alaska so that we can move into North America. And the clergy are just going to have to be pissed for a few more months while we wait to core this. In September of 37, two years, we can give that land to them. That's the only land that I have that's the wrong religion, so... They'll just have to bear with it. Alright, cool. I am going to take a break here. I look forward to seeing you again in the next episode. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.